Check it out, baby. Ooh. Body work is finally done. We've been block sanding this thing for like a month. Time for some paint. You guys know I love these turbo cans. It shoots like a two foot spray pattern. Look at that. All right, let's get started. Wow, that really goes on there thick. Mm. That is a really good looking car. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs. This video is gonna be the start to finish build on my favorite movie car of all time, the 1979 Monte Carlo from the movie Training Day. It's jet black, it's a low rider, it's laid out, it's got 14 inch wire wheels, a custom sunroof, just everything is perfect about it. I have wanted one since I saw the movie 20 years ago. I finally found one and I built it to look exactly like the one in the movie. So let's get to the footage right now. I am super excited. I just bought one of my favorite movie cars of all time, the Monte Carlo from Training Day. I grabbed that. So where's the office back at Division? You're in the office, baby. <laughs> well, kinda. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. It's my first time sitting in it. The door handle just fell off. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. What is that? Brake release. Glove box is locked. I gotta check that. Hopefully there's money in there. Oh, the key, uh, the lock is just ruined. Gonna have to figure that out. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Let's charge the battery. Oh no, how do I get out? I got my jump box hooked up. She needs belts really bad, but we're running. There's three belts. Two of them are almost off completely. Oh my God, look at the eight ball shifter. Not out of gas, too. Shit, it's running better than I thought it was. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. Brakes need some work. Let's see if we have reverse. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh no. Well, okay, there goes the first. We gotta get it in the shop. I'll accept the handle. Yeah, it's probably low on fluid, hopefully. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, don't hit my truck. Don't hit the truck. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh shit, how do we get out? She needs some work. Okay, we finally got her inside. Uh, let's take a look at it. You guys are looking at it the same way I'm looking at it. Like I said, I bought this side unseen. I did have some pictures, but not many. He only had like two or three up. One very interesting thing before we get into this whole mess is this is a 1978. The Monte Carlo in training day is a 79, but you can easily switch parts over from 78 to 79. There's only like two or three little things that are different on them, but check this out. This is a 78 tail light and whatever you call this piece here i'm not sure that's how a 78 is look at this he already started switching it to a 79 the 79 the tail light wraps around the corner and then it has a different piece here so that's pretty awesome that i already have you know one of these already started uh this isn't the best looking tail light so i'm going to go ahead and see if i can't find maybe just a complete set of 79s but it's super awesome that it's kind of already started to do the transformation that i'm wanting to do yeah it's beat all to hell <laughs> which, you know, most 80s cars are, but it's definitely fixable. It's a little bit rougher than I wanted as far as how straight it is because it does have to be black. The training day Monte Carlo is black. Black, whenever you paint black, it just shows every single little imperfection because it shines like a mirror. Black is by far the most, you know, transparent color as far as like bad body work. 
Eric or nicks or dings or anything like that. So that's a little upsetting because we really need it to be straight, but we'll figure it out. No big deal. All this chrome needs to come off. The Monte Carlo in training day doesn't have the side chrome. It does have the chrome on the roof and stuff, which is okay. Yeah, yeah, we gotta take all this off. Missing a lock. This door handle is not hooked up. I found out interior is not great. Got a lot of shit missing in here. Obviously the front seat doesn't look good. Cracked dash, broke windshield. I have not been in the trunk yet. I came back here to use the key and the lock mechanism is gone. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver. We will pop this trunk and see what we got in there. Hopefully it's my door panels and stuff because I really don't want to have to try and find those. As you can see, I'm missing. Yes, I do have the back still in. That's good. But yeah, let's check it. Damn, that is way back there. Oh, got him. Yes! Sweet! Oh, that's busted all the hell. Need to get a passenger side. Driver side looks good. There are my door panels. Oh. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. There are two pieces. Oh, okay. So that needs re glued. But I do have two of them, don't I? I think so. I bet this is the 79, because they were trying to change shit over for the 79. I bet that's what that is. We need that. What the hell is that? Oh, it's broken mirror. Got a bunch of little brackets in there. I don't know what those are. I guess swell? I don't know what these are, actually. I was going to say, I assume they go to the door panel, but I don't know what that is. That might not even be a car park, to be honest with you. And we got a spare. And some other knick-knack bullshit. Okay. No rust back here is really nice. Super happy to have those. I was already checking for door panels online and they are not cheap and they weren't in any better shape than that. So that's really nice. Let's go take a look at this motor. We already know from our drive, it would not go in reverse. Whenever they don't go in reverse, usually it's because you're low on oil. Whenever you get, or low on transmission fluid, whenever you get low on transmission fluid, reverse is the first gear to go out. So let's check that out. Also, first look, I see like three vacuum lines that aren't hooked up. So that's never good. <laughs> okay, check it out. Look how loose some of these belts are. <laughs> that one is just worn down to nothing. This one is just barely even on there. We definitely need all new belts. Looks like my wires are plugged in. The battery is new and it was already dead. So that makes me worried about this alternator, but hopefully it just isn't spinning because this belt was so bad. So I got new belts coming. Vacuum line not hooked up. Vacuum line not hooked up. Vacuum line not hooked up. Um, <laughs> that's just a breather not hooked up. So yeah, we need to get all that little stuff hooked up and good. I don't care about putting a four barrel on it. If the two barrel is working, there is usually a fuel filter inside there. I'm going to go ahead and crack that all out and we'll just kind of do some general maintenance on it. See if we can't get it running a little bit better. But first we need to get all these leaves and shit out of here and then we'll start digging in. Okay, so funny story. All three belts are just completely shit. They are no good at all. I go to O'Reilly's, I get a bunch of new fluids. I say, hey, I need the three belts. On a Monte Carlo, <laughs> me and the O'Reilly's guy are sitting there for probably 10 minutes trying to figure out which combination of belts. And I said, what, what's going on? What, what's the problem? He goes, I need to know, you know, if it's the alternator, power steering pump, fan. I'm like, what is going on? He goes, there's 10 different belts that it can be. And I said, well, here's the ones that are on it. They're so worn out, you can't really tell. I said, you know what? Give me all 10. So bada bing, I got every belt that a 78 Monte Carlo should ever take. So hopefully that combination of belts, we should be able to get these all put back together, which is really nice. Also got some transmission fluid, got some brake fluid, all kinds of fun stuff like that. I did not get the fuel filter because I haven't dug into it yet. So that's what I want to do right now. I want to see how bad it is. It's running okay, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's always something good to check whenever you're kind of just going through all this shit. So let's do that. Okay, we are doing our general maintenance. I got the belts replaced. That was a real big pain in the ass. Got it taken care of. Fuel filter was actually fine. Didn't even have to change that. It looks brand new. Came over here to check my brake fluid. This is real interesting. No, God! Uh, yeah, that is transmission no. fluid. No! I can't say that I've ever seen that before in my life. 
Holy shit. So, uh, yeah. I I guess I can drain it from here and then top it off and see what happens, but I assume I'm gonna have to get it all out of there. Wow. That's a new one for me. Oh. I got it all out of there, but I don't know. It's still on the lines, but let's see what happens. All right, we are continuing with our service. I got all the vacuum lines either plugged or hooked back up. There was like five of them. I mean, I can't tell you how bad that is for an engine having that many vacuum leaks, just all kinds of issues. Um, we did get the brake fluid filled up and then check this out. I just realized 20 minutes went by and I already have a leak. And the one of these reservoirs was bone dry whenever I went to change it. That obviously was the back, so I have a bad brake line we're going to have to change out. No big deal, not the end of the world. I can't really see where it's at, so I'm not going to mess with it just yet. I'm going to continue on with all this stuff. I'm trying to do the transmission fluid and then the oil, and then we're going to go ahead and fire it up and see if it's running a little bit better. But there's just so many little problems that we needed fixed, and hopefully we're putting a dent in them now. But let's continue. Okay, we've got all our fluid changed, got all the vacuum lines done, got everything done except the brake line that's bad. Uh, I got parts coming, but they're not gonna be here this video. I wanna see if it sounds better now that hopefully that took care of a lot of issues. Really need the WD-40 at the door. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh, man. Still sounds like I got a vacuum leak. <laughs> I got a little bit of a rattle sound. I think the air compressor might be bad or the bearing in it because I don't hear it all the time, but I hear it every now and then. I did forget to check to make sure it was charging whenever it was running. So I'm going to do that now. It looks like they had some of the bolts off of the alternator, so that's not... That's never a bad time. <laughs> Definitely got a WD-40 at the door. <laughs> Charging. 15 bolts. I wonder why they were taking bolts off then. Maybe they were taking the bolts off to do the belts. Let's take it for a little drive. Oh shit. I I keep saying I need a WD-40 to this door and I haven't. I don't know why. We're gonna take it for a drive. We probably shouldn't. It's not great, but it could be better than one. Need to make sure I have a reverse more than anything.
brake line is long, we definitely got to fix our back brakes. Front brakes do most of the braking, but when you're going fast, you really need the rears. Because right there, a little bit ago, when I locked it up, it did not want to stop very quick. Next day. day two, we are back on the Monte Carlo. I ordered a ton of parts last night. I also made a video, posted it to TikTok and Instagram. Go follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And I said, hey, I just got the, you know, Monte Carlo from training day. I'm gonna try and build it up. I just ordered airbags and a ton of other parts. 99% of people were like, that is so awesome. 1% of people lost their minds that I would put airbags on it and not hydraulics. The movie car did have hydraulics on it. I personally am not a fan of hydros at all. I have a couple buddies that have them and they cost 10 times as much as bags and they ride super rough. I mean, they basically are like riding with no suspension. I had a couple lowrider guys reach out and they said, hey, they're not that bad anymore. You can actually kind of soften them up, but they're still not a great ride. And they're still 10 times as much as I have in bags. So I'm gonna be bagging this. I do apologize if that upsets people, but I don't need it to be perfectly correct to the movie car. Technically, at the end of the movie, the car gets shot up and blown up. So if I want it to be, you know, perfectly correct to the movie, we need to blow this thing up. I don't want to do that very badly. I do want the look of the car, but I'd like it to be able to drive a little bit nicer, you know, than being super bouncy. So we are going to be doing airbags. I got all the stuff coming. It'll be here next week. So we'll start on that in the next video. But for now, we just took it for its drive. It's running really good. I'm really happy about it. The brake line is shot and I was losing brakes during the drive, which was not fun at all. I was scared shitless. So we're gonna go ahead and jack it up, look at the brake line. And also, all of this chrome needs to come off. The only chrome on the movie car is on the roof. I thought this clipped on. Looks like there's about a hundred little screws. So let's get it jacked up and start taking those off too. Okay. Uh, good news is that top piece was glued, so it came right off. This chrome lip wasn't too bad. I only had one screw that fought me. Naturally, we come back here. Every single one of these is just rusted solid or stripped. So I'm gonna have to actually grind them out. Not really happy about it. I had a couple of uh, Monte Carlo guys tell me these always rust out the rear frame rails. Just make sure that the rust isn't near your arch because then it's not super structural, it's easier to fix. Sure enough, I have rust, it starts about right here. Um, actually, it was a little bit farther back. Right there, we're gonna have to put a plate in it, but luckily I got nothing anywhere else. Obviously, any frame rust is serious, but if it was here, 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 it basically would be a deal breaker on this build, um, but that's okay. Whenever we'll do our airbag stuff, I'll go ahead and plate all that. But for now, I need to grind all these out because they're just stripped all to hell. And then this side will be done. I already like the looks of it a lot better without the chrome. I think the chrome makes it look cheap. Also, somebody put like an AutoZone chrome edge on the door. I hate those the most, so we're gonna pop that off too. But uh, yeah, now we have to cut some shit. Okay, I got all the chrome off. I cannot tell you how excited I am that there is no rust. Anybody that has ever removed a molding knows that water can get trapped behind it. These moldings actually go all the way around the lip and they're held. So just so much mud and shit came out whenever I was pulling them off, but zero rust. I mean, that is so lucky. This is a Missouri car. <laughs> like we don't have Good track records. Really, really happy. I could not be happier, to be completely honest with you. This quarter panel is beat to hell, but that's okay. If it's no rust and solid, I can deal with dents. I can change dents around. It's not that big of a deal. Very, very happy. The other side is the exact same way. 
I think what I'm gonna do now, I still need to do my brake line because it's still rusted, but I think what I'm gonna do now is start taking the rear end apart. My rear bumper is completely shit. It is not good, it's just distorted, it's real bad. So I think I'm gonna start taking it off and seeing what all needs replaced under there because I know I need a new rear bumper because it's not even salvageable. But yeah, let's pop it off. Well, I have some good news and some really, really bad news. The good news is I think I can actually make this bumper work. This bumper just fit really bad and I saw this crack and I just wasn't very happy with it. It just fit horribly. But after looking at it, it was actually in a bind because I have a rusted rear horn. This one is really bad. The good news is, quotation mark, good news is it only is about... 18 inches and then it stops. If you look, these actually have just a little bit of a tilt to them and they must just hold water like crazy. It's like I said in one of the earlier videos, Monte Carlo guys told me to look out for this and they said they almost always happen. So this side being as bad as it is, that side's not good, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't go back as far. Uh, that actually kind of put this bumper in a bind and I think that's half the reason it wasn't fitting really good. The good news is the body is super solid. Nothing is moving in here. I was trying to push it in to see if anything would wiggle in and it wasn't. So bumpers are like 350 bucks, super expensive. They, nobody remakes them, so you gotta buy a used one. And the used ones I'm looking at don't look great. So I think we can make this one work, which is nice. Um, but that's gonna be a little bit bigger of a job than I thought it was. Still no big deal. I've built frames from scratch before, so I can certainly patch one. <laughs> but I'm gonna need to get some two by three square tubing to kind of tie all that in uh, but it is nice i think i will be able to reuse that bumper i think i'm gonna go ahead and wait on taking the tail lights i was gonna go ahead and start stripping this stuff i don't really need to um, go that far since we have framework to do so i'm just gonna wait on that and uh start digging into the brake line now let's go see how bad it is it already has a nice little puddle the good news is the puddle is actually brake fluid that I put in yesterday. So that makes me think the transmission fluid that was in there, maybe the guy just put transmission fluid in there just to get it on the trailer when I bought it. I don't know. The bad news is the transmission fluid can just ruin all the rubber in the system. So I need to double check all my brake hoses even better because uh, there might be, you know, they might be deteriorating because of the transmission fluid. But let's crawl under there and uh, see if we can't find this leak. Check it out. I got the rusty part cut out. Unfortunately, I went through all my brake lines. I do not have the right size. I have the right size fitting, but not the right size lines. And I gotta get this video out. So I'm gonna go ahead and order those. We will do this on the next video. I do have some awesome news though. The rims that are on the Training Day Monte Carlo are chrome 100 spoke 14 inch rims. Well, they're very expensive. They're like $2,000 a set. I figured I'd check Facebook Marketplace. Sure enough, here in St. Joe, Missouri, which is where I live, there is a set. They're used, but they don't look too bad. They have huge tires on them. They have way too big tires on them. Uh, the lowriders, they actually run like a lot smaller tire, but the rims look really good. It has universal adapters that will bolt up to the Monty. So I'm gonna go check those right now. They are for sale for 250 bucks. Well, they're for sale for 500. I'm gonna offer 250 bucks. The person sounds like they're ready to get rid of them and uh, I'm super excited. So let's go check them out. Hopefully I can buy them and I'm running out of time on this video, but I'd like to at least throw one on if I end up buying them. The only reason I'm not gonna buy them is that they're just completely shit. They look good in the photos though, but let's go check them out. We got them. I just got them unloaded. I bought them for 250. Super excited. They look perfect. I've been looking at a lot of pictures of the training day car, obviously. And that is the exact center that it has, the exact wheel. The tires are way wrong though. These are way too big. Really, really excited. They're they're really nice. They need cleaned up, obviously. One of the threads is messed up on the adapters, but I can replace it. I'm gonna try and fix it first, but uh, I think we gotta throw one of these on there and then call it a video. So I've never really put low rider wheels on with an adapter. So this is gonna be a learning experience, but let's see it. So the person I bought these from, they said they had the tool to put this hub on, but I don't know if they actually had it. So I probably need to buy that. These cones or nuts or whatever the hell they are, <laughs> they're beat a little bit worse than I thought they were. So I will probably replace those as well. But that is definitely the right size and the right look. I was a little worried they were gonna be too wide. They look perfect. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool thing about these, the rims are really expensive. Adapters and the nuts are not that bad. I think I can get a full set of four for like 150 bucks. Oh, that's hard to do one-handed. 
check it out. Just in case you've never seen, these are called knockoff wheels. See? There's your adapter. Now, super cool. Uh, like I said, these you can change out and you can get new, I don't know if they call these nuts or what they call them, but it's a giant nut is what it is. And they're threaded backwards on, I think the passenger side or vice versa. Super cool. I cannot believe I picked these up for 250 bucks. Really, really exciting. We are definitely off to a pretty good start on our training day build. Ooh, I just got my new air cleaner that showed up for this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. I have been driving it without an air cleaner on, which is pretty dumb, but uh, let's go ahead and throw it on real quick. Sweet. Uh, by the way, I ordered this from Speedway yesterday and it's already here. I friggin' love them so much. We had to do a little bit of adjustment, but I do not hate the way that looks. The motor is obviously greasy and filthy, but we're going to go ahead and clean all that up. But that's going to be on the next video or two videos from now. Obviously, performance is not the most important part of this car. We're just going for low rider cool. So the fact that it's running 10 times better than it was when I bought it, very, very happy. I'm so excited. I got a ton of parts in. This is all of my airbags, all of my suspension parts. Everything is in these boxes. I'm also starting to get some of my maintenance parts showing up. That is the overflow tank. The stock one I have is broken to pieces, so it obviously doesn't work. Also, I have a bunch of parts coming for a 79 Monte Carlo. This is actually a 1978, but the movie car was a 79. Luckily, it's the same body. There's just different lights. I have all those lights coming, all the little knickknacks to change it over to a 79. They should be here. I don't know if they're going to be here this episode or not, but I'm really excited they're showing up. But for now, I'd say we jack it up and just dive right into the airbags, baby. Let's go. Got her all jacked up, got the wheels off. We're gonna start going through the suspension stuff now. I also wanted to say on my last video, I said I'm gonna be doing airbags on this car, even though the training day car actually had hydraulics on it. I am not a fan of hydraulics. They ride really rough, they're very expensive. And I've probably done 25 cars on airbags, so bags are a lot more familiar to me, so that's what I'm doing. It's still gonna have the look and the feel of the training day car, it's just not gonna be on hydraulics. Some guys in the comments lost their mind. They said, oh, to, to make it movie perfect, it has to have hydraulics. But to those guys, I would say, you can build your training day car however you want. I don't care. You can do whatever you want with it. Also, at the end of the movie, the car got like 50,000 shots in it from like 10 different machine guns, and it actually blew up. So if we were going for movie specific, I could just put it outside and light it on fire, and it would be, you know, a movie perfect car. But no, I want to be able to actually drive this, get in and go. I drive my shit, it does not stay in a garage, and then I take it out every two months for a car show. I actually drive my stuff every day. So airbags are gonna be perfect. I'm really excited about it. Now that we got that settled, I'm gonna start taking all the suspension off. <laughs> Everything is covered in grime and grease, and it looks like it hasn't been off in a very long time. Probably gonna be a lot of hammering involved, but let's go. so much nicer. Oh man, little stuff like that really just starts cleaning all this shit up. But I'm procrastinating because I don't want to take the suspension apart, but let's do that. <laughs> oh shit. It don't matter what year or shit I'm working on, stuff needs cut. Also, it's getting cold, so this piece of shit is back in the videos, you piece of garbage. Hey, the heater, man. There's the moment of truth. You gotta close your eyes and go real slow. <laughs> Oh, that should let go. Why did that not let go? Oh, shit. I still have the shock hooked up. <laughs> shit, I was scared as hell. It's like a bomb getting ready to go off. I'm going to screw this back in and then undo the shock. <laughs> there we go. Screw it back in. It should be good now. All right, let's try this again. I gotta take the shock off. You're gonna believe it. The little piece of shit shield behind that, just a piece of sheet metal, that was actually holding it up. Yeah. There it goes. <laughs> what a 
fucking little piece of shit that is. There she goes. Come on. <laughs> I cannot believe that little piece of shit was holding that up. The tension's all off of it. That was a pain in the ass. Almost got that spring out of there. Day two, working on the low rider. But look at this bullshit real quick. Look at all this damn snow we got last night. It's starting to melt, but I mean, this is unacceptable. God, it's Casey, your favorite. You gotta cut this shit out, man. We're trying to do hot rod shit. No more snow. We are going to be continuing on the suspension. I got to get this spring out. It's basically all the way out. Just kind of wedged itself in there, but the tension is gone, so it's not technically a bomb anymore. But uh, I'm going to go ahead, get this hit, get it out, and then we're going to go ahead and strip the other side. Technically, you could go ahead and put your bags on this one and then just move your way around. I don't want to do that. I want to get everything stripped, and then we'll get it all cleaned up and probably paint it, and then we will do our airbag stuff. I'm procrastinating as usual. It's good work. Check it out. We got it out. Just took a little bit of leverage. We're going to go ahead, work on the other side, and then we're going to go to the back. And then I'm going to open up this kit. This is supposed to be a bolt-in kit. You guys know how I feel about bolt-in kits. A lot of times they're bolt-in, but they need a lot of cutting and a lot of welding and not many bolts. So <laughs> if it's a true bolt-in kit, I'm going to hit all this with a wire wheel and we'll go ahead and get it painted and then we'll put our airbags in there. But if we need to do some fabrication, I'm not gonna get it all painted and then have to cut and weld. So we'll just have to see what it is. But I wanna get all the old suspension stripped before we start doing that. So on to the passenger side. I swear old car pins are the worst part of building cars. Cause this one is just bent and broke all the shit. Two hours later. Come on, you son of a bitch. Ha! Yahtzee! Oh, thank God that took forever. All right, here's the fun part. is done it is time to go to the rear i think whenever i take these shocks off i think that's all i have to do because it doesn't look like the springs have anything to hold them in i could be wrong about that i think i think my top bolts are up in here somewhere maybe not huh okay well we gotta figure that out <laughs> Airbags. Earlier today, naturally, I said the back is going to be the easier one. Let's start on the front because the back is so easy. You just got to take the shocks out. So the rear on these are super easy. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get started on the front. It should be a little bit harder. Yeah, I've been back here for like two and a half hours. The shock bolt was rusted and broke. Ended up getting it broke loose. Someone put the top bolts in with nylon nuts, which it should never have because they're just supposed to be able to get a wrench up there. I could not get a wrench up there to save my life. Finally got them out. I mean, it was a pain in the ass. Ended up having to take one of my little 13 millimeter wrenches and bend it in the vise just so I could kind of grab the top of it and then screw it. It's such a pain in the ass. But all that is because I said the other day, the front's gonna be the harder one. The back's gonna be so easy. Like, we'll start on the front because the back's gonna be so easy. I'm an idiot. Now these springs don't wanna come out. Oh, wait, hold on. I spoke too soon. Got it. Springs are out. One good thing, I thought I was gonna have to take the four link arms out, but I'm not. They have plenty of, they look fine. The bushings are okay. And they're going to drop down plenty for me to get my bags up in there. So that's really nice. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Come here, baby. See? Check it out. These are actually, right now, the only thing that's holding this rear end is these struts. These are basically set up like a four link. But they're actually really good. It's not going anywhere. I can just let it hang. And then we'll go ahead and build our bag stuff off of this. That's nice. Sometimes 
whenever you do these, they won't hang down enough to get your springs out. So you actually have to unbolt all that. And it is a mess trying to get it all back in there and straight. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing next. Oh, we need to go open up our airbags, see what all the kit looks like. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these taillights off. I have new taillights coming, new bumper and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stripped while I have all this open. Uh, so let's do that and then we'll go open the airbags. Check it out, got it all stripped, looks good. We definitely have some damage back here we're gonna hammer around on. It's, it's not the end of the world by any means, but it definitely needs fixed while we're in here. You can tell that the way all this quarter panel is just beat to hell, that it most likely started down there and then they kind of bent it out, but it's easy, we can fix that. I cut the living shit out of my hand, which is awesome. So we're gonna pour some brake cleaner on that and then yell at the gods. And then we're gonna open up our airbags. Ooh, starting fluid is even better. Okay, this is a really good way to disinfect cuts. Starting fluid or brake cleaner. Ah! Oh! Oh, okay. Good times. I've got that on camera. Fuck! Ow. All right. Let's open up our goodies and see what all we need. See what all we're getting into. Like I said, should be a bolt-on, but it's almost never a bolt-on. <laughs> Okay, got it all unboxed. It looks good. This should be just a simple bolt-on kit. Looks like everything is there. Really, really happy about it. The only the one thing we might change is this bracket here. The only thing I might change is we had this same setup on a 72 Suburban I did, and I actually ended up cutting this little one inch section out and it gave me more drop in the front end that being bent that way it gives you a little bit better angle of your airbag but when it's flat it's certainly not the end of the world and it'll drop it a little more so that might be the only thing we tweak but most likely we'll be okay especially since the low rider setups they run such small tires <laughs> this suburban that i had that i built this on it was on like 24 inch rims so we really needed that extra inch this thing's on 14s so it shouldn't be that big of a deal the only thing i'm not in love with is they didn't weld the back side of this bolt so it's basically only half welded on the top i don't know if you can see down in there but this is basically acts as a spindle so this is what holds the top of your bag in and i think i'm going to go ahead put a little more weld on the back of that and then grind it flush um, i understand why they didn't do it because it needs to sit flush with the bag but I'll go ahead and weld that and then grind it out. But other than that, everything looks okay. I'm happy with it. Nothing looks too shitty. Should all work out great. I am procrastinating though because it is time to start wire wheeling this frame and get it all painted. And it is absolutely filthy. And I'm just going to get covered in shit whenever I do it. But that's part of the fun. So let's quit whining and start prepping for paint. Look how filthy this gets. It gets nasty quick. Hey, so Look at the leaves in this thing. Okay, got the frame all cleaned up, looks great. It is time to start drilling for our brackets. I already got this one drilled. Ooh, that is hard to do one-handed. I already got the holes drilled in this one, which is nice. I still have to do the passenger side, and I actually have to drill holes in the floor for the rear bags. That way my airlines and stuff can come right out of this. So we're gonna drill some shit. And then what I wanna do is go ahead and get all these brackets sanded, and we'll go ahead and paint them while we're painting the frame. And uh, I still need to weld bolts on those. But yeah, let's drill some shit. All right, I got all the holes drilled. All the brackets should bolt up normal. I got holes for my airlines coming out of the trunk. I'm starting to kind of mock stuff up just so I can see how everything is going to go together. And sure enough, they bitch. I'm trying to videotape you. Stop. 
Oh, you cocksucker. There we go. So I'm starting to figure out how everything is gonna bolt in. And normally you would want this to come out. There's no way that it can on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a 90 and then drill a hole right there and have it come straight out. And then what it will do is it'll all bolt in up here and then my line will actually run right through the frame. That'll be perfect. Uh, I just have to drill that and that is a really, really thick 3 8 inch plate and it's round. So it's not gonna be fun drilling it, but that's what we gotta do. And then we're gonna weld that up and grind it down. And after I get that done, we need to sand all these brackets and start spraying the frame and the brackets. But let's try and drill on a really thick round piece of tubing. I am not excited about this. <laughs> Those chips are hot! Oh, why am I not wearing gloves? I hope I don't have to go any bigger than that. <laughs> so, this drill is having a little bit of problems. This is a very thick piece and it's a really big bit. So, I'm breaking out pinky. Luckily, the battery is almost dead. I get nervous even using this thing. It's the strongest drill on the planet. Should be okay. It looks like the battery is only at 1%. So, we should be all right. Let's see what happens. Jesus Christ. I just broke another vice. I, I can't even use this thing anymore. Shit. Oh, it broke this piece of metal in half too. We're gonna have to weld this back together. God. All right, I'm just gonna go back with this one. Son of a bitch. Pinky ain't no joke, guys. I know some people think it's like a gag we have here on the channel. It's fucking very, very powerful. I shouldn't even have it in the shop. Ah, and I just broke another vice. So it took me like, I don't know, two hours to fix the vise, got it fixed, got this all welded back up. I mean, there's a reason I don't use this thing every day. I got that all welded up, like I said earlier. I didn't like that it was only welded from the top. Probably would have been okay. I mean, it's never really gonna pull itself out, but I feel a lot better with it being welded up like that. Also, on one of them, the bolt was actually sticking down a little bit past the bottom, which means the bolt would have been hitting the bag instead of the whole plate. So you, know, you always got to check your parts every now and then. We are good to go now on painting. So I'm just going to hit all this real quick with some 80 grit. I'm going to hit the frame in a couple spots with 80 grit. And then I think I'm going to go ahead, break out the turbo cans. Rust-Oleum sent me like 40 cans. <laughs> so I have so much of it. I actually have uh, bed liner cans too, but I don't want to use the bed liner cans. It's really thick, which I'll probably end up doing the bed liner cans later on down the road because it's like just super thick and rubbery. But for now, we're just going to go with the gloss black. Oh uh, yeah, I got to start sanding. slide hammer but uh ever since i was probably like 10 or 11 i just thought it was the coolest slide hammer ever <laughs> all right everything is sanded everything is cleaned up everything is ready for paint i actually forgot my boys from poppy's patina have a new product out called chassis armor this stuff is apparently strong as hell. He said, anything you get it on, it will be there forever. <laughs> so if you get it on you, it's not gonna come off. So you actually apply it with a brush. I think I'm gonna go in here and brush everything that I can, like stuff where I don't want overspray, stuff that I don't have to tape off. I'm gonna brush it on. I might end up brushing all of it, I don't know. Whatever doesn't work with a brush, we'll go ahead and spray with a turbo can, but I definitely wanna try this stuff out. I actually forgot all about it. They sent this probably three or four months ago. I know we're gonna be using it on the Mustang and also the 55 Ford. I'm working on but it's kind of like a fun little preview like I said I haven't tried it yet so let's paint some shit it looks like it's self-leveling so it goes on as brush strokes but then it starts kind of you start losing the brush strokes and it looks really nice i really like it 
The only thing I don't like it is I'm impatient and brushing all this would take forever. <laughs> so I'm basically doing the rails with this and then we're gonna spray everything else. All right, we got all of the chassis armor stuff painted on. It looks great, but stuff like the lower A arms and all that I'm gonna spray because one, not only am I impatient, but it would be a pain in the ass to try and paint all that. These, I definitely don't want to have super thick paint on, so we're going to spray these too. It stinks in here because I've been painting, so we're going to be moving fast. <laughs> it's time for the turbo can, baby. <laughs> it's literally like it rains paint. I mean, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> it's too big of some fun. Check it out. This all came out really, really nice. I really like that stuff from Poppy's Patina. I'm definitely going to be using that on the Mustang. I'm just too impatient, but... <laughs> Came out good. Turbo can cleaned up the rest of it. Oh, I got the airbags on and I got all the airlines ran. Also got those nice rims and tires put on, but I could not get the air management system done because I did not have the right fittings. Well, as you can see, I ordered about every single fitting that they make. So it is time to get all our air management system done. I wanna get the tank mounted, compressors mounted, all that fun stuff. Uh, the air manifold figured out. I think what I'm gonna do is have the tank in the middle have a compressor on each side and then have the manifold probably in front but i don't know sometimes whenever you start cutting these thick tubes and moving them they don't want to go where you want them to go so that's the goal we'll see where they end up i'm excited let's start putting this shit together this is like a giant lego set and i basically have every combination of junction fitting that i need i just have to figure out how i'm gonna run it so let's do it So, I think I had it figured out. Now, granted, I am saying I think. I'm not sure. I think I got how I want all this to play out. It's going to be a lot easier to put my thread sealant and get my thread started on the tank out of the car. So, I'm going to get all the adapters and stuff that I need put in that are very important. I'm going to get them out of the car. Then we'll take the tank over, get it mounted, hook up everything else. This is my air pressure sensor. You gotta have an air pressure sensor in it so that your compressors just don't run forever. They will shut off at like, you know, 150 PSI, 175 PSI, whatever you wanna set it at. But this sensor will tell your compressor to shut off whenever the tank is at 175. Very, very important. Old school guys didn't used to run these and they would manually turn the compressors on and off themselves, which is just crazy. Cause I mean, if they would just run forever, they'll, they'll smoke a battery in no time. So we got that going here. I have a 90 coming out the bottom. That is gonna be the air that is going to the manifold. And then these two sides are just gonna be a compressor going in each. I wasn't in love with this tank that it only had four outlets uh, at the beginning, but I think this is gonna work out fine. Most tanks have like six though, so you have a lot more options, but I think this is gonna be okay. So uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, check this out. I'm actually liking how this is coming out. So I'm gonna have my lines here. I'm gonna have a 90 in them and then they go straight over here. Boom, 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 boom. These ones in here, I'm gonna have them come out about two or three inches, have a 90 and then another 90. I might not have enough 90s now that I'm saying that. We'll figure it out, but it should look clean as hell. Just zoop, zoop, zoop. Richard, put the goddamn sound effects in there. Zoop, 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 zoop. Shit, I might not have enough 90s. One, two, uh-oh, rut row, we're in bro, we're, we're having issues. Uh, I might be able to, no, I need five, no. Ooh, I need like seven, oh no. We gotta find some 90s and I think we can pull it off. If I can't find the 90s, I can probably still temporarily make something work. It won't be pretty, but that's okay if I have to order parts, but I thought I had more of those somewhere. Check it out. 
Got it figured out. I don't hate the way it looks. I wish these manifolds would be front left, rear left, because then it'd be real clean. But unfortunately, it's not. It's front left, rear left. So you got to jump around a little bit. But that's okay. It doesn't look horrible. But that would be so much cleaner if they just went the other way. But that's fine. Not the end of the world. I like it. The only thing I don't like, I had to use, I think, two of these plastic fittings. I'm not the biggest fan of those. They tend to leak. The metal ones almost never leak. I'll probably end up changing that out whenever I find them. I got two of these. These were supposed to be 3 8 but they're half. What we're going to do, most likely, is I will end up changing this out to half inch so that it jumps a little bit faster. 3 8 line are still plenty fine, but since it is supposed to be a hydraulic build, I'm going to end up going with half inch lines and... You can damn near make it jump. These manifolds aren't the best for it because they don't give you that instant surge of air, but it'll still be plenty of quick for what I want. So we will end up doing that at some point, but for now I want to make sure everything works great, everything is fine, and then we'll end up doing that later. But it's super easy to upgrade. You just have to basically change out your fittings from where they are to half inch lines. Really like how this looks, it's clean. I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring stuff up now. Where's my, oh. As you can tell, there is all kinds of fun stuff you get to wire up whenever you're going with the wireless route as far as the controller. If this was like a manual setup, you could technically just run these lines up to a toggle switch and they would go on and off with a toggle switch. But I like having the wireless stuff because you can you can deal with it outside of the car. So what I like to do with all mine, every single one I have is wireless. Most of them are Bluetooth so I can control with my phone. This one will be the phone and the remote. But what's nice is you drive around, you have the remote on you or it's on on your phone you get out go to the gas station hit your button it drops you know it'll be sitting for whatever then you come out hit your button it'll air up before you even get back in so you don't have to if you wanted to go to a car show or something you don't have to sit there and stay in the car while it airs out you just get out of the car and do it so i think it's a lot cooler but we gotta wire it up and then uh we'll see what happens okay we are down to the final shit now. I just got to finish up my wiring. I wouldn't have to do this if I bought a plug and play kit. If you're not super familiar with, you know, doing airbags and stuff, you can buy a kit that just has all this stuff ready to go for like two grand. My controller would just plug straight into the manifold and you're done. Makes life really, really easy. But those kits are usually like two grand and I'm real familiar. I've probably done 25 airbag cars. So I'll buy the bag kit separate, the tank separate, the controller separate the manifold separate i'll just do all that and when you piece it together like that i think i'm in this for like eight or nine hundred dollars it's not very much at all but when you're piecing together different parts from different companies i literally have to take one wire figure out which control it goes to and then take the other wire and bridge them together it's not the end of the world but it would be a lot easier if it just plugs straight in but yeah we are almost done as soon as i get this all wired up i'm gonna throw a battery in here and uh we'll see what happens This is one of my favorite little wiring tips. I think I've showed this on the channel before, but maybe I haven't. Let's say you have two wires that need run together. These are off of my pressure switch. So I have two wires basically kind of going around the trunk and I want them together. So I have the two ends put in the vise, just loosely, not super hard. I'm gonna take these, put this into the drill. Check it out. I'm gonna pull it tight and start going. Now, depending on how much you want to go, you can get really crazy with it. <laughs> but that should be good right there, I think. And then we just back it up a little bit, let it out. Looks like braided wire. This is real nice. I think I showed this before and somebody said, why wouldn't you use speaker wire? Because the stuff on wire needs to be a lot thicker than speaker wire. I think this is a 16 gauge or something, pretty thick shit. I, maybe they make it where you can put two wires together. I don't know. This is pretty quick and easy. Casey's tip of the day. <laughs> Going for my test and... Something's leaking like crazy. I can't tell what it is. What the hell is that? This compressor has a massive leak. I don't know where yet. We're gonna find out. 
Okay, so basically unwired half of it. Just plugged in the compressors and let them run and I don't hear any leaks. So I think it's something with our box or maybe I have the manifold wired wrong and it's just turning everything on. I don't know. I know a couple of these fittings are leaking. So may I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I blew a fuse on it. So I was like, you know what? I can steal one out of here. And guess what? I was like, oh, sometimes people keep fuses in the glove box. I forgot I haven't been in this freaking glove box yet because I don't have the key. Somebody muted it and I mean this is nothing whenever we figure out what's going on in the back I'm gonna try and get in that damn glove box because maybe my turn signals are in there that would be the best thing ever I highly doubt it but yeah it's weird not being able to get in there we are back I stole this this is a wireless setup. This is a Bluetooth setup uh, to work off my phone. I stole this out of the 56 Chevy wagon down at my shop. If you haven't seen it, here it is right here. Richard, put a picture. Put the picture in my hand. Come on, Richard, get your shit together. Um, anyways, uh, we're gonna have to order another one for the customer, obviously, but I have tested that thing probably 10 different times off camera, just double checking everything. It has nothing. Piece of shit. Sometimes that happens. It is what it is. Here's what sucks, though. When I was trying to figure out what the problem was, I basically undid everything. <laughs> so we kind of need to rewire everything from scratch, which is fine. Sometimes this is what you have to do, and we are gonna wire it up to this. Here's the only problem I have. I do not have a, uh, wiring diagram of this one so hopefully i can find that online somewhere let's get to work you know what's funny about wiring is wiring is both therapeutic and annoying as hell all at the same time it's very weird sometimes sometimes i get in a groove though i can just wire stuff all day you know what i'm saying i'll just hang out boy when it's this and i'm like trying to just match up all these different colors it's not as fun as it should be front right down these <laughs> if this was a kit i know i said earlier you had a kit that was plug and play so much easier i mean this would just be plug it in if it was the same brand not even the same kit if it was the same brand it would be red to red blue to blue black to black but since I got a air bag and controller and a whatever accu level manifold, nothing matches. But it is what it is. This definitely should fix it. All right, whenever I had this on the 56, I actually used it. it. Was actually making it go up and down. So I know it's a good controller. So we should be good. I am still worried this was leaking before. So hopefully we'll be able to fire it up and then check the leaks again. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's a this is a 90 fitting. I don't know if you can see it actually, but this 90 fitting was leaking, and I don't have another 90, so. We're gonna have to get creative if it's bad. Also, fun fact, the metal fittings are like $12 each. These plastic fittings are like, I think a dozen of them is 10 bucks or whatever. They're, they're super cheap, like maybe a dollar each. And none of the plastic ones are leaking. I got a problem with this metal one and this metal one over here might be leaking too. So kind of goes to show you sometimes, uh, there's a reason I don't only buy top notch stuff. I'll kind of mix it up. Cause sometimes even the top notch stuff is just shit. I don't hear any uh, air yet. It obviously needs to run a little bit longer, but that's a good sign because before, whatever was wrong with my controller, it was just basically turning everything on at once. So all my, everything was going everywhere it wasn't supposed to. I'm gonna let this run a little bit and then we'll uh, try and hit some switches. Check this out, this is hilarious. I hooked it up, got a link to the phone app. I'm excited, ready to go. Nothing. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Check this shit out. <laughs> so, like, half of one side is up. <laughs> yeah, we got problems. This is not wired correctly. <laughs> I guess my wiring diagram is not right. I gotta figure some shit out. I don't understand. Oh, I've went through absolutely everything. Everything looks like it's right. I assume I got the wrong information for the wiring diagram on this, but I've double checked. It looks fine. I do not understand what's going on. And a couple of the functions won't even work. And I tested them straight with a hot wire. I just made a hot wire and started testing stuff. Still isn't working. Oh my God. 
Holy shit, I think this was plugged in backwards. It has a fitting. It's not even supposed to be able to do that. Shit, can I damage any pins? Can't see them very good. I think the pins are okay. Holy shit. Wow, I think that might be it. Uh, I gotta hook some more stuff up. Holy shit. I swear to God, I'm not joking. Every single one of these metal ones is leaking. That's unbelievable. What a piece of shit. I don't think I have any extras either, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Holy crap, this took way too long, but I got it sorted. I found out those uh, fittings that were leaking, they just push in a lot farther than any fittings I've ever seen, so I actually got them adjusted. We don't have any leaks right now. I do have one problem left. I didn't realize it at the time, but my shut off that came with my kit, that shuts off at like 100 PSI, which is nothing. For example, the one in the Mustang goes up to 175. See, it already kicked itself off. Well, look at this. 100 PSI sounds like a lot, but not when you're trying to fill four bags. It'll just run out instantly. I mean, that's only 20 PSI and whatever, a couple bags. So, see, it's not turning itself back on. So that's a problem. Yeah, she can get pretty damn high, but I don't love that it's not doing that. It should be, it should kick itself back on so that we can raise our front higher. So I definitely need to get a different different pressure switch, but we're controlling it, baby. Sweet, I'm gonna get it as high as I can and then we'll drop it and I'm calling it a night. Check it out, baby. Set him pretty, New York City. <laughs> she is going up and down. It's actually holding air a lot better than I thought it was. Once I got those stupid fittings figured out, I've never seen a fitting where you have to push it in like a full inch. So hopefully those hold up. I'm going to air it up a little bit, let it sit overnight. We'll come in tomorrow, see what it looks like. I think what I want to do before we start digging into something else, I think I want to take it for a drive on the bags. Now, granted, I don't have my shocks on yet, so it'll be a little bumpy, but I want to make sure I can turn and everything, all that fun shit. So uh, I think we might take it for a spin tomorrow. The next day. Okay, good news and bad news. Came in here the next day. The front end was completely down. The back was only like half down. So I know I have some leaks in the front end and maybe one in the back, which is okay. I knew I had a couple little issues with it, but that's no big deal. I'm going to be upgrading the lines to half inch lines. I do not like how slow it is moving. Three eighths lines are kind of the standard when it comes to airbags. That's what I have in everything else. It's okay in the Mustang that it's not super fast or super slow going up and down. But for this one, I feel like it needs to be moving a little bit faster. You can actually make airbagged cars jump like hydraulics if you get like a 250 psi pressure switch and then run all half inch lines it'll jump there's videos online if you want to check on youtube there is airbag cars jumping i don't want that <laughs> by any means i don't really I, that's not what i'm going for i want comfort i want it to be adjustable but i kind of want to be able to drive and have it you know nice uh, and that's just not my priority so i am going to go with half inch lines so it'll be a lot faster but i'm not going to be running that much pressure i am going to change this pressure switch because it is just crazy low pressure switch i have right now stops at like 90 psi which is pathetic i mean the one in the mustang i think is 175 so it's literally double so we are going to definitely change the pressure sensor which that that alone is going to make it move a lot faster but i think half inch lines will definitely help all that stuff will be here next week um some people might ask why did you do the three eighths inch lines if you wanted it to be faster well because basically i already had all the stuff for three eighths lines just because i've done so many bagged cars i just have basically all the fittings and stuff left over from other projects so we're going to be updating those in the next week's video. What I want to do right now, though, is take it for a drive. I don't have the shocks on yet, so it's going to be bouncy and bumpy and kind of a pain in the ass. But I do want to make sure I have no steering issues. I want to make sure I have no, you know, issues just driving it all the way up and then driving it down a little bit. Obviously, I'm not going to try and drive it with it all the way on the ground. I want to make sure I have no issues with that. Uh, I, I don't think I do, but you never really know. Sometimes you can just run into stuff when you change suspension. So that's what we're going to do. But first, I'm rambling. I do that. We're going to get in this goddamn glove box because I still haven't been in there and I don't know what's in there. So... Let's go. I've been looking for turn signals for probably a month. The entire time I've owned this car, I've been looking for turn signals. Haven't found any. I'm going to pray to God they're in the glove box, but I'm almost certain they're not. But let's break into that, baby. I have no idea how this uh, even opens, but the lock is just hammered. It's turning, but... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Technically, when I turned, it should open, right? Why is it not? 
Oh. Oh, God damn it. What is that? There's absolutely nothing in this glove box. A lot of mouth shit. Oh, son of a bitch. Look at how much mouth shit is in there. Damn it. So, is this... Wow, so it's actually still working. I don't know why... <laughs> when I turned it before, it didn't do anything. It just would spin 360, but apparently whatever I did, it whatever I did, it's actually working. Ha! Okay, well, that'll work for now. That sucks. I will have to deal with the uh, mouse poop later. All right, and let's uh, take a first spin. All right, cameras are rolling. Airbags are up. All right, let's see what happens. Remember, we have not fixed our brakes yet, so... We gotta be cool with that. Uh oh. Alright, my bad. Oh, am I gonna hit my wall? No? Oh, maybe. Don't be mad. driven you a while don't be mad at me we've been busy baby come on me and you we're gonna end up being good friends so let's 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 not be shitty to each other all right come on baby. so far steering's money the and back i can feel the back is way too much pressure in the back oops wait no We're good, we're good. The back is fine. We're good. <laughs> yeah, baby! Oh, look, I don't even have shocks right now. I got too much pressure in my bags. Look how smooth they are, baby. This is with like 100 PSI in my bags. Oh, just floating. Floating like a butterfly, baby. Brakes are not good. Definitely need to fix that before we take it for another drive. Come on, get those cobwebs out. Get those cobwebs out, baby. I like that motorcycle. like this car a whole lot. Where, uh, let's see. Let's put the back like all the way down. See what happens. Oh, I think the back is on the ground. We're fine. Oh, we're good. No, it still has some air. <laughs> I think I might have unplugged the battery in the back. Remember, I just did that burnout. <laughs> yeah, I did. I can't. I can't connect with my controller right now. Yeah, I did the battery. That's hilarious. Well, we're back. Hell yeah. That was a good drive. Out 
Just got it unloaded. This should be perfect. Obviously I don't need all that, so I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming it. I need to trim the bottom out of it too. I think I wanna take the glass out. So before I do any cutting or welding on the actual car, I'm not gonna risk ruining that glass. I don't know how easy it is to get the glass out though, so I'm gonna find out here right now. I need to flip it upside down without breaking it. So I don't know I'm gonna do this yet, but we'll figure it out, I guess, as we go. I believe this was out of a, I think he said like a, might've been a Ford Explorer or something. I don't remember what it was, but it was some sort of an SUV and uh, it should work perfect, but I'm not 100% sure yet until I get it out. So let's go. a bigger pain in the ass than I thought. Good news is I did get it unbolted. I got it all trimmed. I got all the paint off so it is ready for welding. What we're gonna do now is bring in the Monte Carlo. The poor baby girl's been sitting outside for like two weeks while I've been waiting on parts for it. And uh, oh, I just labeled this front too. I almost did it again. I keep thinking that this is the front messing it up. That would have been a very bad mistake. Oh, we'll get this marked and uh, cut the shit out of the roof. Let's go. Also check this out. I got nitrous for the Mustang. God, it's gonna be so fun. But that is more nitrous than anybody would ever need. All right, let's go get the uh, money, baby. Check it out. The baby is back inside where she should be. She should never go outside, but had to move some stuff around. Also, side note, I need to start building more motorcycles because they just save so much space. You just, you throw it in a corner when you're waiting on parts. I love it, yeah. So much easier. Check this out real quick. We have our sunroof and I was, you know, looking at where I was gonna put it. It looks kind of good right there. I was thinking that's pretty good. It's straight above the seats. I love it. And then I realized, you know what I need to do? I need to look at the Monte Carlo from training day because that's what we're building and look, I found a picture. It is way up front. So I thought it was gonna be here. Probably needs to be more like that, which I, I don't love actually. We might end up tweaking it a little bit, kind of meet somewhere in the middle, like right there. That would be directly above your head, which would be nice. But uh, yeah, I can't believe how far forward it is in the movie. So I'm gonna kind of, I want it back here. And in the movie, it's way up here. I'm gonna probably meet in the middle, kind of just find a happy medium. I'm not in love with it way, way up front. That don't look too bad right there. I'm gonna measure 10 million times now, mark it, start cutting. I got it marked. I had to, uh, you know, drill a hole to troll some people on TikTok and Instagram. We all know that's that's one of the things I love to do. Uh, but I got this marked where it needs to be. Mother fuck. Hey, yo, my boy. Hey, bro. I know you're new and everything, but you don't go off when I'm recording. Play you some video of what the last dude who started, you know, going off all the time when I was recording, looks like. He's in a scrap bin somewhere, so take it easy. You see me holding a camera, you be quiet. Be quiet. We're not off to a good start. You've only been in here for like a couple days. <clears throat> Sorry, I was rudely interrupted. Um, I got the... Damn, I'm so pissed. I got the sunroof marked where I need to go. I actually need to come way out here with a cut, but I want to cut it here first. Then I can sit it on the actual roof and then mark where I need to be exact. Um, I don't want to do, I want to do a butt weld. I obviously don't want to overlap it on the roof because it will want to rust. So we need to make sure we get a good butt weld on there. But uh, yeah, let's cut the shit out of it, baby. I was also checking, whoever had it marked, where this brace is. What I'm going to do is cut this brace out and probably end up moving it back or something. The good news is piece I'm welding in has some bracing in it already, so it shouldn't make the roof too floppy. But if I do need to add some more bracing, I will address that whenever it comes time. But uh, let's cut some shit. All right, I got a kind of rough cut. I just got it sitting in there. It still needs to be cut out some more so it'll sit flush. I almost got a little too cute with this corner and thought I overcut and was very pissed. So I went ahead and just put it back in here. I'm gonna trace around it. 
around the edge, but I'm gonna cut an inch on the inside because what I really wanna do is get this in there so that I can run a couple sheet metal screws and then I'll scribe the line so it'll be perfect. But I definitely don't want to mess up and overcut anything because this really almost pissed me off. <laughs> Let's take some marks, some measurements and cut a little bit more and then hopefully we can get it in there sitting flush. After measuring 16 million times, pulling it off, trimming, pulling it off, trimming, pulling it off, trimming, I have it exactly where it's at. Look, it's gonna sit flush. I'm gonna put some sheet metal screws in it, then I can get an exact scribe on exactly where it's gonna be, trim it the rest of the way, and then we'll start doing some welding. But I'm really, really happy how it's laying out. Looks pretty damn good. The thing I was worried about was the curve because this frame still has curve in it. And I was pretty sure that the curve was matching up when I was looking at it, but you know, some of these sunroofs have a shitload of curve in them. And I was like, man, if that crown doesn't match my roof, I'm screwed. But uh, this looks pretty damn perfect to be honest with you. But yeah, let's get some self tappers in it and then we will uh, take it out and cut some more. Make sure I'm hitting metal on the bottom first. I don't know if I showed her or not, but look how close. <laughs> I cut that corner just a little too close. I got so lucky that I could kind of, you know, get it where it needs to be. But I was almost 99% sure there was going to be like a one inch section out of here. I was going to have to patch, which wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I didn't want to. So, all right, let's start screwing, baby. I marked it with a permanent marker and then went over it with a scribe. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but... Now we know exactly where it needs to cut. Let's start trimming it, and then hopefully we'll get to weld it. I think I need to get in here and get all this damn matting out before I weld it, because that is definitely gonna burn. <laughs> Just realized. Let's cut some more, baby. Getting the freaking headliner bedding out was harder than cutting the roof. I got it all out around the weld, so I'm worried it'll catch fire, but look at that shit. Ugh, that took like 30 minutes. I tried to chisel it out. I got a lot of it with the chisel, but it's just there's glue holding a lot of it on. Woo! All right, I think it's about time to weld. I'm not gonna jinx it yet, but uh, yeah, let's see what happens. It is time to weld. Since we are butt welding and not overlapping anything, <laughs> the tolerances are very tight. I have dropped the sunroof down probably five times off camera. Another thing I have to do, I have to be really cool with my heat because this roof is thin. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but like this whole roof is moving around as I'm moving this vice plant. I'm gonna end up TIG welding it because I can control my heat a little bit better, but I wanna use the MIG weld to just get it tacked in place and then I can cut these um, screw parts out and then go ahead and get those welded too. This is gonna take a while. I'm gonna really take my time hammer and dolly it, make sure my, make sure all my joints are perfect when I get them tack welded. That'll make it easier when I go to TIG weld it because I can just weld the whole thing. I won't have to sit there and keep adjusting it. I said all that to say it's time-lapse time. <laughs> Check it out. Got it all tack welded. Looks really, really good. Kept all the joints very, very tight. I'm gonna do some TIG welding, but there's probably three hours worth of TIG welding there. And not only is that a boring ass video, I just realized my TIG welder is not gonna reach the other side of the welds. <laughs> so I'm gonna probably do all that off camera. I'm gonna do a little bit of TIG welding here on camera, but the rest of it I'll finish up on my own. Then we need to move to something else. I haven't showed off all the parts I've got, but I ordered plastic pieces that were broken on the inside. They have finally showed up, which is awesome. Also, I got a dash cover. I thought that was a full dash when I ordered it and then realized it wasn't. I wasn't happy about it at first, 
but I looked at a bunch of videos with people putting the covers on. They actually look really nice whenever they're on there. The reason you need a full dash usually is because your dash is just ruined. Mine is shitty, but it's actually all together, so that cover should work out perfect. I also got my carpet in. I think my headliner's in next week. My seat covers, I got brand new seat covers, they're coming in next week. So the reason I say all that is basically the interior is ready to go. So what I need to do is get all of my plastic primed and painted and then start to install it because the plastic goes in first, then the carpet goes in, then the headliner goes in, and then you start putting your seats in and stuff. So plastics are what goes up next. And if you didn't see my last video, I have blue plastics. Because this was a blue interior, but I am fixing them. They were kind of cracked up and dirty. And we're going to be repainting them all black. I have some somewhere. I don't know. We've been moving everything around the shop right now. So I don't know where I put them. But anyways. Oh, here we go. Here's the black ones I painted. I wanted to test and see if the black paint would work out on the plastics. It looks perfect. So we need to get the rest of this plastic out, sand it down, and paint it. But I'm going to do a little bit more TIG welding before I call it quits. God damn, that looks good up here too. I didn't even look at it from the front. <laughs> but yeah, let's do a little TIG welding and then uh, start some painting. Found a little bit of body cock. Hey, -oh, body cock. So I was uh, starting to do my TIG weld. Hey. Oh, shit, that's still hot. Uh, st damn. Damn. Starting to do my TIG welding and I was getting ready to start sanding on the plastic pieces. I realize I haven't even put the damn glass in there. So I'm obviously gonna let that cool a little bit and uh, we're gonna throw the glass in and see what it looks like. Check that shit out. <laughs> God damn. Uh, it was filthy, so I poured water on it, and sure enough, it does not leak. Oh, so happy. I mean, technically, it shouldn't leak because this is the original metal to the sunroof, but still, you never know on these things. God damn, that looks good. So happy. Also, fun fact, I was looking at it. It has a Chrysler stamp on it, so... I'll have to ask uh, my buddy, because I cannot remember what he said he got out of, but I thought he said it was like a Explorer or something, but obviously it's not. <laughs> so much work. Just a ridiculous amount of work, but just like the other shit, converting it to 79 turn signals, which took six weeks of looking, 79 tail lights. You know, these are just things that the Monte Carlo on training day had, and that's why we're doing them, so. Sweet, man. This took just so much time and I still have to weld the damn thing, but couldn't find all the bolts to bolt it in. So right now I have the jack holding up the ass end of it, <laughs> but I'll find some bolts and shit. Sweet, man. Let's, uh, let's paint some trim on this bitch now. I'm going to scoot it back and then we'll uh, paint all of our stuff up front. This shop is getting packed. I'm getting ready to do a giveaway, um, hopefully on the 51 $3,500 build, but I don't know what order any of these videos are going to be in anymore. That might not have happened yet, or it might have already happened, but <laughs> we got to start, you know, getting rid of some shit and uh, making room because we got more shit coming and more fun shit. This is the last pieces I needed. Get out of there. Oh, wow. Those are so much nicer than the one I had. I only had one, so I had to order it anyway, but these came in pairs. And I'm definitely going to use these instead of the one I have. I got to go find the one I have, but it is pure shit. <laughs> Here's the one I had. Look how bad it is. It's just, it's like chipped and faded and all kinds of shit. And I bought both of those, I think, for 60 bucks. So, so, so happy. I ended up, I think I've ended up replacing four or five different pieces. And at first, when I first started looking, I could not find them. And I was like, great, just like... The freaking ta the turn signals and the tail lights and shit. It's going to be impossible, but sure enough, I ended up finding several places that sold the trim. Some people think they're worth way too much, but, uh, you know, you just stay patient. You'll find some. But I saw one of these because I already had one for like 300 bucks, and I was like, oh, I'm never going to have all the trim for this car. But then I found a couple other places that had them. So, sweet. Let's get them sanded and paint.
painted and it absolutely reeks in here <laughs> so we'll come back in tomorrow see how these look a couple of the spots the plastic just sucked up all the paint instantly so i have a feeling those three over there are going to need some more paint but uh we'll see how it looks tomorrow the next day came in today sure enough half of these look like shit the other half is okay-ish but not great didn't know what was going on so i had to go through the videos yesterday i was like what did i do sure enough i was mixing paint brands which you should never do especially with spray paint they use different thinners and shit in between each brand and they will usually have a reaction if you mix them like duplicolor with rust-oleum rust-oleum with u pole whatever you never try and mix them whenever you're doing something so some of that is my issue some of it is i had sand scratches on that weird plastic coating that I had on some of these pieces, but no big deal. I have other plastic pieces that need painted, so I'm just gonna be doing like a revolving door of plastic pieces that I have to paint black uh, to get ready for next week, but that's not very fun to watch, so we're gonna move on. Great news, I got my other mirror today. I'm so, so excited. These are out of a, I think, 80s Camaro, if I remember right, 85 Camaro. The Training Day Monte Carlo had updated mirrors, and you can see from where I had to weld up the old mirror location that is in a very different location from the stock mirrors. So I have to grind that down a little bit. I have to drill a hole, and then we will finally have our mirrors on there. I'm so excited. The amount of parts that I have needed to do the 79 Monte Carlo from training day transition has been crazy. And like just shit that I would assume, I would assume if I needed mirrors on an 85 Camaro, I could go anywhere in the world online and just have 10 places where I could buy them. That is not the case. I had to find them on eBay. Some places I found, they sold them new, but they were like $500 a mirror. I'm like, there's no, I just need you shit because I'm going to be repainted anyway. But long story short, I finally got them. Also, I think I said it earlier in the video, I for sure am going to be getting my seat covers next week. So I should have every piece of the interior for next week's video. And hopefully we can get the interior completely done. Carpet, all new covers. We'll have all the plastic pieces painted and we'll put the dash back in. I'll just be so happy. Interior stuff takes a long time and it's kind of tricky, but I am excited to see how all that will look. And then we're gonna start doing some body work, but getting ahead of myself as usual and I'm rambling. So let's drill some holes, baby. Hard to drill on the other side. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I like it. Man, those are cool ass mirrors. I really, really like it. I think we should push this thing outside and take a look at it. I haven't done a walk around in a very long time. So I got her outside and it just needs washed. And I thought originally it was gonna be too cold to get the hose out, but sure enough, I turned the water on and I don't see any icicles coming out. So uh, let's wash some shit. That one's never been washed still. It has probably a half inch of bird shit on it. <laughs> this one sat outside for a month or whatever while we were waiting on parts. So it's still kind of gross. I still need to clean the blue off my white walls. And to be honest, the Mustang could use a nice wash too. So let's wash some shit and then we'll take some videos over clean. I'm so happy. I thought I might have left the blue on for too long. I left the blue on for too long on my truck over there, and it just kind of always had a little blue hue to it. It uh, came right off. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Let's keep watching. That is a good looking car right there, man. <laughs> I've just been staring at it for like 20 minutes. Oof. I mean, I don't even like 70s and 80s cars, but that is bitching. I can't wait to paint it. Oh, we've already started body work. Richard, put a video up of me doing body work right there. I'm gonna keep my hand up for a little extra time because Richard kind of slow. Anyways, finally started body work. Very, very exciting. I'm so happy with how it looks. I'm not happy with how many stupid lines and, you know, vacuum shit that it has. I've organized them as best I can. Check it out. Body work is finally done. We've been block sanding this thing for like a month. It's time for some paint. You guys know I love these turbo cans. It shoots like a two foot spray pattern. <laughs> Look at that. All right, let's get started.
Oh, I hit the hood. Fuck, that sucks. That was stupid. Everything laid out very well. I am extremely happy with how it looks under the hood. I did, however, spray paint the hood a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes you're swinging and you miss. We missed a little bit there. We're making content. We're having fun. Door jams are really nice because, like I said, I basically already did them, so they just kind of needed to freshen up. And, uh, yeah, looks so good. I cannot wait. We're going to let this shit dry all night. And then tomorrow... We're gonna get her outside and wash her. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get all the low riders out or all the bagged cars out, the Mustang, C10, the Impala, get them all cleaned up and get them together. Have like a nice little four car spread, but I'm done for the night. So funny story today. I came out at like 2 p.m. I wanted to shoot it, see how it looked. The sun on the black and the chrome, you literally can't see anything. It's just like shining back at you too much. So I had to wait till it was dusk. Man, I'm just so happy. That's a really cool looking car, man. <laughs> oh, windshield's coming in next week too. I mean, guys, that is pretty goddamn cool. That might be my favorite. I love the Cali tags on it too. Whoever sent me those, please leave a comment because I want to give you a shout out because I absolutely love them. We got too many cars around here. We're gonna have to do a giveaway on something. I don't know what it's gonna be though, but if we end up doing a giveaway on the training day, you guys let me know what you want to see a giveaway on out of all these damn cars. Uh, truck will be done in probably a month. Not doing a giveaway on that one. Not doing a giveaway on the 57, but we could do training day, maybe the Model A maybe my work truck i don't know i love my work truck more than anything but the poor thing has just been sitting lately i've been driving the mustang a lot has a bad dead battery right now because i left the lights on but if we end up doing a giveaway on this we can do the giveaway now but i'm keeping it for at least a month because i want to drive it and have fun with it i'm gonna start doing engine work here probably in the next week or so and getting it all buttoned up but that is a really good looking car we got a cut and buff it i got a bunch of 2000 grit thousand grit paper coming so <laughs> jams ended up coming out real nice see i gotta put my chrome door sills on but i am not a 70s and 80s car guy but i am in love with this thing damn it looks good <laughs> Finally. Oh, that makes me happy. They both have it now, which is even better. <laughs> Check her out. She's back up to sitting pretty. Very, very happy. Also, one thing I learned in this whole deal was I can steal those, take them out, unhook them in about five minutes. It's so easy. Getting them back in there, getting the lines back ran the way they're supposed to be is a much bigger pain in the takes a couple hours maybe an hour <laughs> we're not doing that again also i got this one all buttoned up so i should never have to come out again tomorrow i am getting the rest of my power steering hose that is the this is the non-pressure side so it's just a, another hose that goes on there but we have everything so i should be able to get that buttoned up and then we can take her for a drive hopefully in the last video i got it running better but i still don't know how great it's running because i only had it idling you know i know i need to top off on my fluids and all that shit too so hopefully we're gonna figure all that out tomorrow whenever that part comes in and i think that's about it oh also just realized uh i need to put a latch on that other door because my passenger door is just swinging open right now and this chrome uh i am not very impressed with this stuff it has came off a bunch of times i've heated it up i've put it out in the sun i hit it with a heat gun it just yeah i'm gonna stick a screw in them so that they're there and uh hope to find a better way to fix this also this bumper is not actually attached all the way i need to bolt it in we still have a laundry list of stuff that needs on this car but boy she's getting close and i really want to take it for a drive tomorrow so that's what we're gonna shoot for i got the bags stolen back from the Impala and put in the Monte Carlo. It ended up being a giant pain in the butt. I, I threw them in there in like maybe 10 minutes. For some reason, it took like two hours to switch them back. I had to rerun a couple airlines, giant pain in the butt. But 
They are back in there. We're finally switched out. So now we gotta do some stuff to the motor because I wanna take this thing for a drive it's so bad. It has not been out past the driveway in probably six months. And I got a lot of stuff under the hood that is just not right. So let's get to messing with it. Just got back from the parts store. Great news. We got the power steering line in. It can technically take a straight one or a 90 degree. I said I'll buy both and figure it out because I didn't want to order the wrong one and then have to wait for another one to come. So we got both of those. I also got all new fluids. We're going to go ahead and top everything off. I think I already did that like a month ago, but it's good to just do that again. We're going to get under the hood. I want to button up every single thing under the hood so that tomorrow we can just get in and go. I was going to try and cruise it today, but it's already dark, so there's kind of no point in doing that. I don't know. We might. Also, I don't think I have any of my lights hooked up, so I might start doing some stuff like that as well. And those interior parts are actually painted so I can start getting my dash and stuff together, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want everything to be running and driving perfectly. So the first thing we're going to do is get our power steering line in, and then we'll start topping off fluids and see how she's running. Okay, got all the fluids topped off, fired it up. It's running pretty good. It's still smoking a little bit more than I'd like. Something needs adjusted a little bit. Also, I realized I have like two or three different leaks, a couple different hoses that don't have hose clamps on them, and a couple vacuum lines that still need buttoned up. So I'm gonna do that. Then I wanna fix this bumper. I need to basically screw it in from the bottom. It's just kind of flopping a little bit. I'm gonna try and get a little like mini tripod set up so you can see under there, but most likely you're not gonna be able to see anything. And what I wanna do after that is get my passenger door working cause it is not latching. And I actually had to take the striker out because the latch locked up. And I don't mean locked up as in it's locked. I mean, the latch is froze. I don't know what the hell happened, but I gotta deal with that because I can't have a door not shut whenever we go for a drive tomorrow. So let's see, let's see, let's do the bumper thing. No, let's start buttoning up our little hose clamps and then we'll do the bumper thing. So, ooh, I gotta figure out what happened. There's a bunch of plastic clips that hold the bottom of this bumper and every single one of them is ripped in half. Not only did the clip break, but the actual bumper itself is ripped. So not the only way to fix it is sheet metal screws. Everybody's, Everybody's favorite, favorite is drilling shit up because all the shavings land on you and it feels great. great. Got the bumper fitting so much better. It still is angled down a little bit. I looked at a bunch of pictures. That's kind of how these roll, but I don't love it. I don't know if I'm gonna see. I don't think I can adjust it anymore. So it is what it is, but it is 10 times better than it was, which is great. The only thing I want to do now, and then we can basically take our drive tomorrow, is fix this damn door. And I don't, don't know, know how, how to fix, fix it. it. <laughs> Cause I mess with it a bunch. I've soaked it in WD-40 a bunch of times. I think what happened was it was already closed and then it got slammed. So it like really closed really bad. I don't know. I'm going to mess with it. I'll probably throw the door panels back on once I get that working, but we'll see. I don't know. I'd like to get some of the interior stuff put back together, but that's not as important as it running and driving because I actually want to take it out. This thing has not been driven farther than the driveway in probably six months. So I'd really like to just buzz it around the block a couple times, but we definitely got to fix that. This took so much longer than it should have. Did I just lock it up again? Oh, oh no, oh no. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, I got too cocky. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, okay, well I got, 
I got way too cocky because apparently I did not free it up. I thought I, oh, I did, I did. Oh, that isn't going up far enough. That's the problem. So latched up higher. Ah, got it. Okay. So this thing was bent and I think I bent it back and then, oh, yes. Let's go put this back together. What a pain in the ass. Screw that door! Kiss my ass! I spent more time on that door latch than I care to mention on camera, but let's just say it was a fight, and it was a real pain in the ass, and there's something wrong with that thing, but I got it working. We're good to go. So, we got it running, we got everything buttoned up, fired up. What I'm gonna do tomorrow is buff this windshield, because I can't see shit. I pulled it out earlier, pulled it in, and I ran into this little tripod with my camera on it. It was the one I did whenever I was doing the bumper work earlier and just crammed right into it. You okay? <laughs> Shot it across the shop. Kind of funny. And the reason I did that, I could not see anything out of this. So I need to buff some of this tomorrow. I have a brand new windshield coming in. It just isn't here yet. They are taking their sweet time getting it to me. But after we get that windshield buffed, we're throwing a GoPro on and we are taking her for a drive. I am very excited, but I'm done. It is super late and it's getting hot. Holy shit. You okay? <laughs> I think it's good! Yes! yes! Took it like a champ! Holy sh! That scared the crap out of me. I completely forgot I had a little mini tripod set up earlier, and I cannot see sh out of that windshield. We gotta clean that. <laughs> oh sh! God damn it. I brought this thing out earlier today when it was too sunny and I couldn't see <laughs> That don't look bad right there. I'm gonna lay it out on the ground real quick too. Ah! 
Oh, it looks 10 times better on the ground. I probably got 10 grand in it. Maybe less. Oh no, here comes the cops. That's not good. It's not really legal. Now, <laughs> she is not 100% done. I'd say she's 98% done. Uh, I'm having some issues with the running and driving of it. Uh, I believe I probably did something wrong when I put the intake on. I think I got the distributor off a tooth. And I'm just a little bit busy here. So it's actually at a mechanic shop right now. They're going to get it buttoned up for me. Whenever it comes back, we're going to do one finished buff. And then it is going to the winner. We actually did a giveaway on it about a month ago at this point. It's going to be going to the winner out in California. He is going to enjoy it. It already has California plates. So, you know, it was destiny apparently. <laughs> If you got all the way to the end of this video, you are a true fan. Thank you very much. I will let you much. know, if you go to caseyscustoms.com, my hoodies just got back in stock, so check those out. If you aren't subscribed already, please hit that button now. It helps the channel out more than you would ever imagine. If if you got all the way to the end of this very long video, please put a crown up. I will try and comment on every single crown comment. You can either write the word crown or use a crown emoji. Do that. I always try and do that on my longer videos so we can see who actually got to the end. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, comment, all the good shit they tell you at the end of videos. Check out some of my other videos. Peace. I love you.